time it is. Marvin Devine. Hoover. Axel. And you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice Whip game cool, make them look like cool I'm your host, Steve Belcher. Man, I am excited about this evening broadcast. Let me tell you, out of my 33 years doing dialysis, I wouldn't have never dreamed in my wildest dream, right? Five years ago, three years ago, I would have never thought in my wildest dreams that I would have this interview tonight with the Chief Medical Officer, Michael Argon of Outset Medical and Tracy Almighty. The first, I'm saying the first dialysis patient in the United States to do home hemodialysis with the Tableau dialysis system. Now, before we get to our guest, for those of you that don't know about home dialysis or never really heard about it. Let me give you a brief background. Home hemodialysis for the treatment of end-stage renal disease was first developed in the early 60s. Because of the benefits and cost effectiveness, this modality of treatment was increasingly used, okay? By 1973, when the Medicare uh, end-stage renal disease program began, when Richard Nixon signed that Medicare Act, right, approximately 40% of all dialysis patients in the United States were on home dialysis. Now, since then, here we are, 2021. Probably got COVID going on. Since then, both the percentage and the number of patients on this treatment has steadily decreased. 
And such patients now compromise approximately 1.3% of the U.S. dialysis uh, population. Now, look, again, before I bring on our guests, just want to show you that machine. Here we go, right next to the sink, dab, the Tableau dialysis system. Meet the Tableau. And then we have some pictures of it right here in the ICU. And then, if those of you who don't know, here go home dialysis with not the Tableau, but you can see the awkwardness. <laughs> but without further ado, I want to bring on our chief medical officer of Outreach Medical, I'm sorry, Outset Medical, and, and Tracy Almighty, the first patient to do home hemodialysis with the Tableau machine. So let me give them the VIP welcome. Dr. Aragon, Tracy, welcome to World Kidney News International. Thank you, Steve. That's the best thank you. I've ever had. Let me it's been a pleasure. <laughs> and, and thank you. And, and my apologies uh, with the mispronouncing of saying outreach because that's our organization, uh, Urban, Urban Health Outreach Media and Outset Medical. So, again, thank you. Dr. Aragon, um, let me ask you before we start with the interview, you heard when I first started out talking about back in the 60s when uh, home hemodialysis was kind of popular because it was cost effective and uh, it, it was being used increasingly. Why is it now where we have all these dialysis clinics as a decrease and people doing home dialysis when it would be smart to do? No, it's a great question, Steve. And I, I um, you know, it, it, it's hard, but I, I think what really happened, you know, historically, uh, you know, back in the 70s, Medicare took over and, and it really sounded like a really good idea. You know, we can have patients come to a clinic um, that they could be treated by, by medical professionals and that that would be the best thing for them. But, but I think what, what patients have noticed, and you know, I, I've been doing uh, nephrology now for about 15 years, and what we noticed is you know, people do better at home. And, and technology back then was a lot more challenging, so that may have intimidated a lot of patients and, and, and made them think they needed to be you know, a, in a facility where there was a professional. But the technology, you know, like ours and others, it's made it so much easier, and uh, and and I think uh, we really need to let patients know that they can take control of their disease here. They can do this at home, open up their schedule, dialyze when they want, and do it on very very easy technology. Uh, but I think we got lost along the way. We we thought it was the same thing, and we thought it was better, and and I think we've all realized now it's not, and we really need to to help get the word out. So I really appreciate you having me on and and letting me do this and 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 help you know, spread the word of the importance of, of home, not home analysis and, and owning, owning your illness and, and learning how to take care of yourself with this treatment. Oh, absolutely. Before we talk with Tracy, uh, Dr. Aragon, you just mentioned you've been practicing for about 15 years. Can you just share uh, a brief synopsis of uh, your medical training? Sure, sure. So I, I, um, I'm from Texas. I hope, hopefully the accent isn't, isn't putting everybody off, but, um, but I'm from Texas and I, I trained uh, in dialysis. So I trained in internal medicine, which is what most kidney doctors will do. And then you specialize into nephrology. Um, and that's what I did. And it was during that training where I came across the first patient I had ever seen that was on home dialysis. And it really just just blew me away. I mean, he had two daughters at home and he was telling me how, how flexible his, his schedule was and how he was able to participate in everything his family was doing. And schedule his dialysis around that. And he just looked, he looked well. I, I knew his kidneys weren't working, but he was feeling well. 
He looked like he was healthy. He told me he was eating well. That really, really led to me when I started my own practice out of training to make sure that home dialysis was a big part of what I did. So, so in the area I practiced in, we started seven different home programs. Uh, and then I came across this technology uh, about four years ago and ran a clinical trial with Tableau and again, blown away about what we could, what we could do, how, how much easier we had made this. Uh, so then I joined uh, Outset about two years ago to really help try to drive, um, you know, the technology getting better and better um, and, and, then, uh, and then trying to help encourage home dialysis uh, in general. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Tracy, you was first diagnosed with kidney disease in 2005. Uh, you mentioned that your kidney doctor at the time tried to put your kidney disease in remission. Mm -hmm. Dr. Aragon, uh, before I move on with Tracy, is that possible to put kidney disease in remission? It, it depends on what it is. There are definitely some, there are some diseases we're actually very successful with. If we can diagnose a patient early before those kidneys have gotten uh, too really damaged from, from the illness, there are some diseases we can actually treat very, very well and actually reverse them. There are others that, that we do a better job of at least just slowing down the progression. Um, you know, for, for those that, that have diabetes out there, historically, uh, many years ago before we had diabetes treatment, the, from the time you had urine changes of diabetes to starting dialysis was about two years. What we know now is with better medications, better treatment, patients being able to follow with their kidney doctor, we can actually delay that 20 years or, or have patients that never get on dialysis. So, so there, are, there are some that we can absolutely treat, and unfortunately, there are others that, that we're still working on developing better therapies for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Tracy, when you first got diagnosed 2005, I'm sure your nephrologist tried to do everything they could to um, slow the progression. And then you mentioned, uh, and my condolences, that your husband passed away, and that kind of contributed to the drastic decline. Uh, yes. As a result, you were diagnosed in 2008 with kidney cancer. Yes. Um, unfortunately, you know, my husband passed away and I really wasn't taking care of myself. I did have an appointment with him uh, maybe a week before he passed away and I kept on dragging my feet. But um, I didn't go in until February 2008. Um, I had pains in my stomach that sent me to the hospital. And that's when they found that I had uh, kidney cancer as well as end-stage renal failure. Mm -hmm. So they removed my right kidney and then I started dialysis and I was on dialysis for five years. And then I, um, my son and I, we participated in the live kidney exchange program. He was 23 years old at the, at the time. He was an exact match but he donated a kidney to a woman and her husband um, donated to me and it was a perfect match all the way around. And then I was dialysis free for seven years. And then just this April, um, I had uh, again, pain in my stomach sent me to the hospital, I had a bowel obstruction um, and that knocked out the remaining kidney function because during that time I knew that um, dialysis was inevitable, but I, I was buying time. And with the operation, it took, um, I did dialysis a lot sooner than later. Sure. So sure. now I'm doing my second tour of dialysis uh, as of May, April. I, I started 2020. Okay. Now, now Tracy, when, when you went on dialysis, um, did you have any education le before leaving the hospital? Or did you know anything about home dialysis before you started outpatient dialysis? The first time around? Yes. No, mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. even know that it was the, um, an option at the time. And since it was an emergency, so it was just like, this is what I had to do. I went, came home with a catheter. Um, and then after I healed, because I had other issues, after I healed, then they put the fistula in and it had to mature. So I was using a catheter 
And I was on dialysis for about maybe a year or two, I think. And that's when I found out about um, dialysis at home. And then I started training. Dr. Eric, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Dr. No, go Eric, ahead. Um, why are the, um, the, the fall through the cracks with the lack of education for patients like Tracy when they are diagnosed and they are hospitalized for about a week after they may come in for emergent dialysis. Uh, you know, I worked in the queue, so I, I know the process. Uh, patient goes to the emergency room. Uh, they draw labs. They're in respiratory distress. They call the on-call nurse. I come in. I wait for them to put the catheter in, verify by x-ray, and start the treatment. And then once that happens, uh, they're talking about putting in a, a permacab and then sending the patient home going through a uh, case manager to find a unit in the community. Now, with that being said, why the lack of education to let patients know about home treatment options so they can make an informed decision on, on treatment? It's a great question, Stephen. And uh, I, I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think what happened historically is it, 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 it got to be easier, unfortunately. Um, it got to be easier to tell a patient, let me put your permacath in, uh, let me talk to the case manager and I can get you to a dialysis mm -hmm. unit. Um, and that's easier for me as the physician, that's easier for the patient, you don't have to think about anything. It's easier for the case manager in the unit. But in the long run, it's not, it's not what's best. Um, and, and as you know, in, in life, uh, the easiest is not, it's not always the best. Mm -hmm. And it's a missed opportunity. And, and I think we also have, um, over the years, we have quit training uh, kidney specialists to learn enough about home hemodialysis. Um, it is one of the other initiatives we are, as a company, really focused on is trying to improve the education of nephrologists as they train. Um, but when you have a procedure that the physician's uncomfortable with, that is more effort um, and, and it's so easy to do the opposite. Um, unfortunately, I think that that's what we've done. We've missed the opportunity to educate the patient in the hospital. We've made them feel like this is a procedure that needs to be done by a nurse uh, or a technician and that it's something they can't do. Um, and, and it's a big missed opportunity, one that we're really, really trying to change. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Argon, I have some questions I wanna ask you, but one question that um, well, it's not a question. Well, it is, but I just want to thank Outset Medical. Um, and why I say that is they were very critical and beneficial during the COVID. My question to you, how beneficial was the Tableau during the breakout of COVID? Yeah, no, no, thanks, Stephen. And, and I will tell you, you know, obviously no one saw this coming and, and um, you know, you, you, you hear about uh, people that run towards, towards a problem or away from it. And one thing we thought as an organization is we knew we had a, uh, a device that um, we could easily train a nurse, even if they had never done dialysis before. We knew we could get them to learn the device quickly. We knew we could uh, very quickly get the device set up and help hospitals. It's very flexible, so it can do any treatment that's in the hospital. So we knew we could very quickly do that. We just needed to help those hospitals know that we were there and that at a time like COVID, our team was going to respond. Our team was going to go out there. Uh, and, so, and, and that's what we did. So we actually uh, ran towards New York, New Jersey, Detroit. Um, even some of the West Coast um, and, and we in New Orleans. And, and you know, we, we told those facilities, we're here, we can have a team there, we can train you remotely. Um, you know, and one of the things everybody is concerned about is, you know, our dialysis nurses, we're, we're running short staff, but what we can help because the device is easy enough to use, we, we can help them be more efficient in their care. Um, and then also um, HHS, you know, has an emergency response uh, and really saw Tableau as a device that could be used in emergencies. And so uh, we did work with HHS and, and deployed 50 systems uh, to the New York, New Jersey area. Um, also just interesting story, Guam um, very recently had a big surge and we also deployed systems out to Guam and had members from our team that, that flew all the way out there to help train and support those patients uh, uh, in that island. So um, it, the device is very easy to set up very quick. Uh, very flexible, and so we've been able to to help those those sites that need us. 
And now speaking of Guam, I know it's uh, U.S. territory, but are there any future plans for international uh, production? Because I have uh, many war kidney warriors in international groups who saw the ad. They love the machine, the design, the innovative sleekness, and they want to know, is it uh, um, available internationally? It, it not not yet. Um, we are looking at what what that would look like and when. Um, I think for us, it's been very important. You know, we're a U.S. based company, and it was very important for us to be able to, um, you know, support the U.S. based patients. We still feel like there's a lot of change that needs to happen in in outpatient and inpatient dialysis, and uh, and we're committed to making that change and helping drive that change. That's going to help patients both in the hospital and outside. Uh, we would love to see more patients doing home dialysis, uh, even if it's with another technology. To me, the most important thing is is do home. But we really do think Tableau makes that a lot easier. Um, and so, so we've got a lot of work to do here. But uh, we we will. Uh, I, I think uh, we will eventually uh, go international. I just don't know when. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy, yes. you mentioned that you use um, both machines. You had the opportunity to use uh, the next stage and Tableau. And in fact, in one of the videos where you was describing uh, the setup process, you said it takes 10 steps compared to 30 to set yes. up the Tableau. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. Um, I don't know what if they made any changes with the next stage, but when I was training, it was approximately 30 steps. Uh, Tableau, I affectionately call her Tammy with an IE. And um, it's, it's nine steps in, um, to cantillation, and you do one more step, and then you start your treatment. There is uh, a pictorial. It shows you exactly what you need to do in each step. They, um, it tells you when there are alarms, and it tells you exactly what you need to resolve the issue. And then the um, your BP and your heart rate is done manually. You don't have to write it down. And the only thing that you do manually is to put in your in your uh, your current weight and your temperature. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's it's a lot easy. And people who are intimidated. Um, with like, you know, medical machinery is very, very user friendly. And it took me about two weeks to learn. Two weeks? Two weeks. Two wow. Weeks. But yeah. you had to have a caregiver as well, right? Yeah, I have a caregiver. My, my, sis, um, my sister, my daughter, she's in college. Uh, sh she is with me when she can, but I, I do it by myself. But what I do do as an emergency in the area that I live in, we have Blue Angels. So they put a lot box on the outside of my front door of my apartment. So God forbid, if there is an emergency, they could just come up. I have my neighbor available. And what I do also, um, I instead of a 30 minute BP check, I do it 15 minutes. So then I could be alert of if there is an increase or decrease in my, in my um, blood pressure and I could take the appropriate steps. Yeah, that's very, very smart to do it every 15. Um, Dr. Eric, I, like I said, I have some questions, but one more yeah. question I want to ask before the main question. Mm -hmm. When a patient walks into a unit like this, do they find this intimidating? I, I, I don't see who wouldn't. Um, and, and to me, I, I can't imagine. And um, I, I think uh, if anybody's ever been in a dialysis unit, I, I would definitely recommend go sit in one of those chairs for a few minutes uh, and imagine what, what that likely feels like, um, you know, feeling like you're on display. Um, you can see how close you are to another patient. And, and you may or may not know who that patient is. You likely didn't know them uh, when you started treatment and you may or may not necessarily get along with that person, but that's who you're going to be sitting with um, for the next four hours. Uh, and if they're sick, you know, they may be coughing again. You're very close. And you obviously with COVID, it's a big concern to be around someone who may potentially have an infection. But I, I, I would encourage anyone to sit in a dialysis chair at a unit and see if you don't feel intimidated and if you don't feel very uncomfortable uh, being there. Now, with that being said, what steps can patients take to be aware of their kidney health? 
Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, our goal obviously would be no one ever get to dialysis. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we, we're trying to help when, when that's become a, a need. But I would encourage you way ahead of time. You know, you need to go see your physician regularly and get regular blood work. The way your physician will know if your kidney function is doing well or not is with a blood test um, and, uh, and also with some urine. And so that's very easy to get done um, at, uh, at, at a clinic. And then your doctor can also check your blood pressure, check you for blood sugar problems. Those are two of the biggest causes of kidney disease. So first is prevention. And that just means going to those visits, even though you're busy, even though you don't necessarily want to go see the doctor routinely, you should go at least annually early on. And then if you have health issues, go sooner. Outside of that, there are some great educational tools um, online if you want to get more information. Uh, the National Kidney Foundation provides a lot of information and it's focused on patients, uh, but also ask your physician. Uh, I think if you ever get diagnosed with a kidney issue from your primary care doctor, I think you do want to go see a kidney specialist and get all that information. Even if it's an early referral, that, that's fine. Go get that information. Learn about what it is you can do. What are things you can change in your diet? What are medications that may be over the counter that you think are safe that may not be for your kidneys? Educate yourself on those aspects. And you'll see that that you you will do much better, much longer, and, and hopefully be able to avoid dialysis altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to put a plug in. Not only the National Kidney Foundation, you can get information, AAKP and Absolutely. Urban Health Outreach Media, which you're watching. Absolutely. Right now. Absolutely. Boy, I, did, I should have mentioned that, right? Oh, oh. that's okay. <laughs> hey, Dr. Hargan, where are you located? Somebody wanted to ask where were you located? I know you so, said you're from Texas. I, I, and I still live in Texas now. Um, the company, uh, Outset, is actually based in California in San Jose. Uh, but my medical practice uh, was in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. No, oh, okay. Okay. I used to work in uh, Houston. Yeah, uh, that's where yeah. I grew up. That's where I grew up. I didn't move very far, but that's, uh, yeah, I've been in Texas uh, most of my life. Yeah. Now, um, what... Dr. Argon, you mentioned education. So with that being said, once diagnosed, how can patients educate and advocate for themselves to ensure they are aware of all treatment options, such as Tracy and her first time being diagnosed? Uh, I, I, the first thing I would say is ask questions. Um, you know, there is no bad, there is no bad question. And, and it, it's a lot of information to take in at one time. Uh, I remember having a lot of those conversations with patients when I'm having to tell them that their kidneys are, are not doing well. Um, you can see it. It it there, there's a lot of it's a lot to take in. But I would recommend ask the questions. And just because you didn't ask it in the in the appointment, it's okay to call back later or schedule another appointment. But ask those questions. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think if you know anyone that has ever had kidney issues, you need to speak with them. Be open about it. Understand what they may know and where their resources are. Um, and then, and then we, we just highlighted you and, and thank you for mentioning urban outreach as well. There, there, there needs to be, you need to go look and get good information from good places. Um, but your physician has those answers, um, or, or a lot of them, um, and other patients do as well. Um, you know, Tracy, there's a lot of patient advocates there that are willing to talk to patients. You just need to take the initiative, ask the questions and don't stop mm -hmm. asking until you understand. Um, Dr. Og, something outside of what we're talking about, what would you suggest to patients who, we know all physicians are not like you. You seem like you're a very thorough nephrologist, very caring and compassionate. And we know not all doctors are like that, but what would you suggest to a kidney patient who feels their nephrologist is not listening to their needs and when they complain, they get labeled as a complainer. I, I, I mean, because this is happening a lot and patients are feeling uncomfortable even mentioning certain concerns from their doctor because they feel like they're not being taken seriously. Yeah. And when you have physician practices all across town that knows each other or whatever the case that could label a patient what would you suggest just looking outside of a box for a patient who, you know, wants the, the correct treatment and find out what's going on, but can't get the right answers from the nephrologist? 
Yeah, no, it's 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 a great question, Stephen. We we always got lots of patients who who um, you know may have seen other physicians, and and you know it's one, it's a relationship, and two, remember that physician is is your physician. They're working for you, um, and if that's not working for you, then you you should find another one. And and we you know we've seen fa- Facebook is a great example. I think some of these other out, out, you know outreach programs where you have that network. Who of patients that can say, "Hey, I saw this physician, and and I think they're they're really great." But I would ask around. There's nothing wrong with telling your primary care physician that physician you sent me to. We just don't connect. I don't feel like I'm getting what I need. Let me let me ask someone else. And I've had patients, you know, drive from other states or other cities to come see a nephrologist uh, because they heard really good things about that one person. I, I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Your kidney health is important enough. That if uh, if you feel like there's somebody really good, if you've heard someone really good, that's not too far. Um, I think it's important enough to go see that, get, get that opinion, and uh, and if you feel like you know that that's the right answer and that's who you want to follow with, then it's probably worth it to you. But mm-hmm. don't stop, don't stop looking. Yeah. This is a relationship, uh, as Tracy knows. You, you, your nephrologist, um, it, it could, should be somebody that you have a long term relationship with, and that relationship is is uh, hopefully it's just clinic and it's not ever getting to dialysis. But when really important things, transplant, dialysis, things like that are happening, you need someone you can trust and you can talk to and you know is going to advocate for you and what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Now, Tracy, how did you become the first person in the United States to dialyze at home with the Tableau dialysis system? And look, I, I congratulate you because, you know, unfortunately, there's hundreds of thousands of people dealing with this disease and for you to be pretty much a spokesperson, one of, 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 you know, several spokes, patient spokesperson for the uh, Tableau. How did that come about? In fact, here we go. I got that will fit me <laughs> right there. At home. And, and, and Tracy, that looks very compact. No, lot of lines and mm-hmm. wires hanging out nothing it closes up the cartridges fit right inside how did you become the first patient where you approach or did you have to fill out a form or something mm-hmm. no when my numbers started um when my kidney function started uh decreasing um, my nephrologist did tell me about Tableau, but it wasn't approved by the FDA. And I told him, I said, well, I don't know what you need to do to get me on the list. Cause I want to, I want to do it at home. So that was like a year and a half before it got approved. And it's just like, I guess it was the right time at the right place. April, I had, I started having pains in my stomach, went to the hospital and then I found out that Tableau was uh, available. And I didn't even know that I was the first one until I started training. And then people from Alset came and they said, you know what, are you ready to, are you ready to be famous? And I'm looking at them I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't even know. So, you know, but I'm, I'm enjoying it for now because I don't know how long it's gonna last. No, I, listen, I applaud you and, we're going to keep your story going after this show because, <laughs> look, I mean, if you look at the two, and I'm not you know, pitching it because I have you on the show, Dr. Argon, <laughs> but I mean, if you look at it, and Tracy, how long did it take you to set up the Tableau? Tab, um, like right now, since I'm a pro and doing it, it takes me about maybe... 10 minutes to set up, but what takes the longest sometimes is when I cantilate. Sometimes I'm not as lucky to do it the first time. So it could take like maybe with the cantillation, like maybe 20 minutes and then I get frustrated and then, you know, I got to calm myself down so I could just get the needles in so I could start my treatment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so like I said, it's 10 steps. And then I do my own testing with, um, the chloramide and chlorine, I do the testing, and then also the um, dialysate, I test and make sure that everything is okay. Mm-hmm. Dr. Argon, briefly discuss the concept dialysis on demand. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, great. Thanks, Steve. Um, so um, for anyone who's who's worked with other technology at home or seen that, um, you know, other devices need um, either another machine to purify water or they need to make dialysate in a batch. So it may be a six to eight hour process, maybe the night before, uh, and then you can treat. Dialysate all de on demand is all about Tableau by itself, no additional equipment. Um, when you're ready to go, you just turn on the machine and the device starts to purify water uh, from your sink or from your shower. So we take tap water, Tableau purifies it and makes dialysate out of it. Uh, and again, on demand, um, you know, as Tracy said, it's about 10 minutes to set up and then to prime the machine is about eight minutes. Um, which is uh, half the time uh, of, of other devices. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Argon, I'm sorry. Uh, let me remove this picture. Uh, we got several questions right quick before mm -hmm. I uh, ask Tracy a question. Um, one, can you travel with this machine like you can with the uh, next stage? Um, right, right now we're not recommending, you know, putting it in your car and, and taking it. Um, our, our, our real goal is to have Tableau going wherever you're going, um, and have it be available to you where you're traveling to. Um, you know, as, uh, you know, Tracy started in April, we just got in home, uh, in, in April, although the device has been, uh, you know, pr taking care of patients in the U S for much, much longer than that. The home approval just, just came in, in March of, of last year. So, uh, we are continuing to grow the network, but for now, um, you, you wouldn't be able to take it with you. Um, but we want to be able to allow patients to travel by having Tableau go be wherever they're going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, do you have to have a, a center near you using this system in order to want to do, uh, use the Tableau? Um, Yes, but but near the nice thing about home is near doesn't have to be as near as uh, as what you think about within center. You know, within center, you're going to be going there three times a week. And, and so you want it to be very close. The nice thing I think about home is um, you could you know, you could be several cities away, go do your training and then treat at home. And then your follow up uh, really. And in, in since COVID started, the follow up is is a telemedicine visit uh, once a month. And then uh, maybe once a quarter go to the facility. So you could actually be quite a bit away. Uh, one of my home patients was 10 hours away from me. Um, wow. But uh, but he would drive in. Um, at the time, we were doing monthly visits in person. This was before COVID. Uh, but he would drive in uh, to see us. And then every now and then we would just do it as a telemedicine visit. So so close, but but not as close as you would think from a, from an in-center uh, mm -hmm. picture. And, and Dr. Argon, health insurance does cover the Tableau just like any other dialysis, home dialysis uh, system, correct? Yes. And actually, the, the way dialysis is paid for, and I'll, I'll spare everybody the painful details of, of all of that, but the way dialysis is paid for, it is not specific to the device. It's only to the treatment. So uh, if you're on dialysis and, and you meet whatever criteria it is for health insurance or Medicare to pay for your dialysis or Medicaid, then they, they pay for it regardless of what device you're doing and whether you do it at home or, or in an, in an in-center. Mm -hmm. Now, Tracy, we, we know everything always can be peaches and cream like we want. So with that being said, what challenges have you encountered using the Tableau, if any? Uh, there are challenges mentally. Um, I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, I'm happy all the time. Sometimes I throw tinter, mental tincture tantrums because I get frustrated and thinking about the idea that I am back on dialysis. But then I try to each and every time I have my treatment is to walk in gratitude because it could be a lot worse. It could be that. I didn't have the um, opportunity to get trained and do dialysis and I would be going in center. And I said that you have to have a positive mindset and you have to make a choice. Are you going to have a floating river of sorrow or are you going to have a water full of joy? And I know that sounds uh, corny, um, but that's how I feel. I, I, I have a choice of um, taking lemons or making lemonade. 
w w with my with my situation. It's out of my control. So what can I do to live a better life? Because, you know, I have three children. They're adult children from 20 to 30. 20, well, uh, what, 22 and 30, but um, I still want to be a part of their lives. There's things that I want to do. Um, so I I made a choice to, to accept the good and the bad. And when I don't feel well, just Friday after I did treatment, I wasn't a hundred percent. I was, I was very, very tired and um, fatigued. Guess what I did? Mm. I ate, I watched TV and I fell asleep. Mm. So you just have to accept your limitations. And, and once you do that, then you're not fighting. You're just accepting. And just when you have a good day, make that day the best day that you have, because the next time you do treatment, you might not have that energy, but at least you are fulfilling, you know, minute by minute, day by day. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Argo, let me ask you a question. Then I'm going to ask you a a question from the comment section. Um, tell us how patients are. Well, let me let me rephrase that. What type of KT over V or um, clearances are patients receiving with home dialysis, such as Tracy? Yeah, no, good question, Steve. And, and in general, um, you know, uh, Medicare requires a KT over V um, weekly to be greater than 2.0. Um, and so that that's something that's very easy for home patients to be able to accomplish. And with Tableau, you can do that um, as little as three times a week. We can hit a 2.0, um, but we can also go more frequently. Our, our home trial was actually on four days a week. Um, and at four days a week, the average for all the patients was a 2.8. So we can easily go, go well above the target and those treatment times were three, three and a half hours. Two so eight. yeah, we were able to do that at four days a week. Um, so, so clearance really isn't an issue. I think, um, you know, to me, our, our, our goal was to make something really easy that if three times a week's the right schedule for the patient and the physician, and they both agree, that's the right thing. We, we can do it. And, um, and if we can, uh, if four days a week is more appropriate or five, you can do all of that and you won't be worrying about your clearances. You'll be able uh, to get that. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Copperman, it's KT over V, not B, but can you just, just briefly um, explain what KT over V stands for, um, Dr. Argon? Sure, sure. So KT over V is it's a it's a calculation, um, and I'll, the the details are not as important on the calculation as it is that this is how your doctor and uh, Medicare and your dialysis clinic determine if you had a good treatment or not. Um, Medicare decided um, oh, probably late '90s, early '80s, or somewhere in the '90s '80s um, how well to, we need to measure this to determine if we're cleaning your blood well enough during a treatment. So for patients in a clinic, um, the KT over V target is 1.2. So if you're on dialysis and you want to know how you're doing, you need to ask your doctor, what's my KT over V? You want to hear over 1.2. Um, at home, we aim a little higher because we know we can. Uh, and then that's a different calculation. Uh, again, and that, that goal is, is 2.0 or better. Uh, and so it's just a measure of how well we're cleaning your blood. And, and um, we want to hit that to say we had a good dialysis treatment. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Argon, what is the process to get home hemoclinic uh, at another facility to adopt Tableau? Uh, mm -hmm. In particular, this person say, uh, Jonathan says, a Fresenius clinic or to find a clinic that already has them. And they're mm -hmm. in Southern California. No, it's a good question. We're, we're talking to dialysis providers all the time. I think um, for me, if, if you're a patient and you want uh, Tableau, I think you need to share that with your doctor and your facility and let them know. Um, but we're always talking to new clinics. We are growing, um, you know, as we speak. Uh, and so I, I think knowing the demand is there helps a dialysis provider know that, that this is something they need to look into. Uh, but they would need to have an agreement with, with Outset to be able to deliver the Tableaus and, and whether that's using it in the clinic or, or at home. Um, but we have, we, we are growing every day. So we're having more and more clinics. Um, and, and then, you know, it's just the provider needs to, needs to talk to outset. Uh, Dr. Aragon, can you use 
the Tableau with the long-term catheter? Um, you can. We're, T Tableau can work with any dialysis access. Um, so uh, catheters, AV fistulas, uh, grafts, uh, Tableau can work with any of those. Mm -hmm. Now, Tracy, what would you recommend somebody watching this program right now and they wanted to go home and do home dialysis, but they're not near a clinic that has the Tableau, but uses next stage. Um, what recommend recommendations would you give them? I mean, home dialysis is home dialysis, regardless of what system you use. But um, in spite of the systems, what would you recommend to somebody who was optimistic or, well, not optimistic, but sitting on the fence of their decision to go home or not to go home to do home hemo? I believe that in any decision that you have to be in the know. So be in the know, be in the know before you say no. Find out all the options. Find out what's available to you. You have to look at the pros and cons of what is suiting your, what suits your lifestyle. And then once you have everything on the table, then you can make the decision because you may be missing out because mm -hmm. of the fact that if I wasn't doing dialysis at home, I wouldn't be able to have the life that I have. I have two part-time jobs. One, I say, you know, doing dialysis is one. I work for a long care um, uh, company, okay? I am a um, youth director. I'm a sub subdirector for community service. I'm a patient consultant. I'm an advocate. I'm a grant writer. I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't aware of the option of doing it at home, mm -hmm. you know? So I am living a fulfilled life with, fortunately with Tammy, you know? So I just say, just be in the know before, before you say no, be in the know of your health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dr. Aragon, um, is the Tableau approved for solo use? Uh, right now, the FDA approval is for a care partner to be at home uh, with the patient. So um, right, right now, that would be uh, that. That's what the FDA approval is for. So is is that just a matter of logistic paperwork in order to do solo home without a care partner? Um, I, I think what I can say is that we are FDA approved to be home with a partner. Um, ultimately, it's a decision made between the patient and the physician. Um, but, uh, you know, we, for, for, based on the labeling, it, it would be with a care partner for now. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, that, that's, I think what I'm allowed to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. I understand. Um, Dr. Arga, how, how does Tableau make home dialysis safe and easy for patients and their care partners? No, good, good question. Um, so, uh, home dialysis in general, um, you know, it, it can be a little intimidating. Um, but Tableau, we've done several different things. One, um, the reason patients can get burnt down on home dialysis is just the amount of work that goes with it. Um, you know, to set it up and to batch your dialysate, and then you got to rush home and make sure you get your treatments done before that batch expires. And, um, you know, 20, 30 minutes to set up and then another 20 minutes for it to prime. So all of that work gets to, gets to really, you know, wear you out when you have other things that you really want to do. So first we, we made all of that a lot easier set up around 10 minutes, you know, the, the, you're on treatment in about 20, um, you don't have to worry about batching dialysate and, and rushing home. You're able to dialyze on your own. So, so to me, that's, that's one big thing. Um, but Tableau is actually a, a lot of software and a lot of hardware. And what we did with that software is built in a lot of safety. So there's a lot of sensors in Tableau that help protect you from making a mistake. Um, if you have a mistake in setup, Tableau will let you know. If there's something going on in treatment, again, Tableau will let you know. And not only just an alarm or an alert, but it'll also show on the screen a, a picture of where that is and some and some written guidance on on how you can uh, how you can resolve that problem. Um, and then we do have our twenty four seven customer experience folks that if there's ever a question about your treatment or about your Tableau, um, you can speak with that team and they can they can walk you through and answer any questions you may have. 
Um, and then we also do allow, or we do have the capability of remote monitoring. So this comes with the Tableau. This isn't any extras or anything else. This is just standard. Um, but if we have Wi-Fi connection in your home, um, your treatments as you're running um, are actually being transmitted over the internet to your clinic. So your nurse or your physician could check in on your, your treatment. Uh, and so you can call them and say, hey, I'm having an issue. Can you look at it? And they can actually see all the alarms and your blood pressures and everything. Or your nurse could be monitoring, for example, your first few treatments at home. You may call them ahead of time and say, hey, I'm going to treat. Can you watch? And they could actually watch remotely on, on how you're doing. So we take a lot of steps. If you don't feel safe, um, then I don't think you're going to be successful at home. So we've tried to build in a lot into the technology to make sure people feel comfortable. So Tracy, the Tableau and home dialysis in itself has afforded you more time to do other things, um, participate at the community church, um, and spend time with family and friends where you don't even have to leave your house to go to dialysis like you used to, especially in inclement weather. How, I mean, satis um, satisfactory does that make you feel to know when it snows or inclement weather that you don't have to leave your home to go to dialysis? You know what? I jump for joy because I know that when I was doing it in center and there was a storm, I would have to, you know, go outside, shovel the snow. I was all sick up, didn't feel like doing it, but that's the only way. Then to get there, and if there's um, inclement weather, you would have to give yourself more time to clean up your car, clean up the driveway, and then your um, your um, your your ride there is going to be hindered as well. So maybe a 15 minute ride to your clinic may be 45 minutes, you know. And then if the clinic was uh, delayed, then you would have to wait until they call you. So that's the reason why the best time slot is first shift. So then you could just get in and get out. But if you are second or third shift, that you would have to wait and you're at the grace and mercy of what's going on during those uh, the previous shift. Mm. So it, it, it's truly, truly a blessing. And, and, and you know what, Dr. Argon, I was sitting here thinking, listening to Tracy, how she was talking about she had to go out and dig the snow if it did snow. And it's probably like that for thousands of patients. And But with that being said, couldn't that be somewhat possibly advantageous for a patient with kidney disease who could be dealing with some heart related issues, go out and do this strenuous work. Uh, could, could that be uh, a, almost detrimental for them to exert a lot of this heavy work with this type of condition? No, absolutely. And, and there's actually, uh, there is a, uh, several studies on this and, and the one that, that, and uh, the one I recall um, really looked at, mistreatments and then patients that get hospitalized after a mistreatment. And then they went back and figured out why those patients missed the treatments. Top three reasons. One, weather. And just saying, I'm just not going today because it's raining too hard or it's snowing or, you know, there's a hurricane, whatever that issue is. Two, birthdays. Three, family events. Mm -hmm. All of those things are things that are solved by home dialysis. Um, and, and they're very reasonable things. I mean, it's not the suggestion that patients don't want to go to treatment, although I know there are days that every that patients wake up and they don't want to go treat. I understand that. But people don't, don't miss treatments because they don't want to. They miss treatments because they have other important things in their life that they want to go to or they're having trouble getting there. And those things are all solved by home dialysis. And, and you know, another thing, Dr. Argon, that I want to just add to what you said also holidays, because I can't tell you the many times that I work uh, on holidays and the uh, administrator or the DOM will call a nephrologist to see if they can cut the patient's treatment time and run everybody three hours uh, so the staff can get out of there. And back then, I wasn't doing advocacy, so I didn't know that even that right there decreases patients' life, even though it's for one day. Mm -hmm. But just the thought 
of cutting the patient's treatment so so staff can get out on a holiday. When I think back and, and think about it, it's just, it's, it's, it's almost horrendous. I mean, yeah. but- no, um, I, I, and, and especially around holidays, you bring up a good point. I mean, to me, Thanksgiving, I mean, you know, those that are that are blessed to have big families and have these wonderful meals, there's a lot of salt in that. There's a lot of food. There's probably a little more fluid taken in those days and to miss a treatment or, or have to move a treatment and then shorten it because of the holiday. Um, that's the worst time to miss. Whereas if you were at home, you know exactly how much you ate or exactly how much you drank and you can adjust your treatment and your treatment schedule to do to, to meet what you just did. And, you know, you know, you know how to take care of yourself. So. Um, absolutely. Great point about holidays. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Now, now, Tracy, with that being said, uh, we got about four minutes, but what have you been instructed on what to do for power outage? You may have somebody watching and say, OK, I'm sold on home dialysis. However, what if the power goes out? I live in an apartment and I can't have a generator. Uh, what do I do for backup if I'm running on treatment in a thunderstorm or mm -hmm. Hurricane Sandy or some wind comes through there and knock the power out? Have any have you been instructed by the local power company or your facility on what to do if you found yourself in that very exact situation? Um, two things that I can do, and we did briefly go over this, is that one, you have to safely return your blood and you have to manually do it. And then I have two um, options. Either I call the center and say, you know what, my power went out, I need to come in, or I could go to a hospital and go to the ER. So hopefully that right. would never happen. You know, and then right. what, and this is something I need to do when I haven't done. Um, and I suggest this is the first thing that somebody would do when they do do their dialysis at home to contact the um, electric company and tell them the situation so that you would be the first one or your area would be the first area that they would bring back the, um, the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve, if I can just add something there, sure. I absolutely agree. And I, you know, in, in Texas for us, it's, it's hurricanes. Um, and, you know, very rarely does does that just kind of come up on you. You know, we can see hurricanes coming or tornadoes and, you know, sometimes, you know, these bad weathers are this bad weather's coming. So one thing we would advise our home patients first is if you know it's coming, dialyze, you know, make sure you dialyze, you know, those days right before maybe dialyze a couple of extra a day extra if you need to. But make sure you're you're very well clean. So you have a little bit of time. And then two, I would fill out a form, as Tracy was mentioning, for the power company uh, that we would mention our patient where they live and, and that they have life saving equipment at home. And that would uh, the county would then prioritize them. So your physician can do that for you and, and help you submit that paperwork. Mm -hmm. OK, now, Tracy, before we go, uh, what do you want patients watching this right now on dialysis to know about home dialysis? I think um, you should look into it, educate yourself. Like I said, that I feel great most of the time. I have my good and bad days, but you can live a life during dialysis. I know a lot of people who are on dialysis and they're depressed, they're miserable, they hate going in center. And, um, and it doesn't have to be like that. You do have a choice and exercise it. Like I said, just be in the know of all the options that are available to you. And maybe, you know what, Tableau may not be for you, which is fine, but find something that suits you and not everything is in center. There's other options and just look into it and take care of yourself. Um, be as healthy as you can be and, and just know your, um, know your body. You know, if you see constant swelling, th th there's an issue. If you're constantly tired, this might be a sign. And then also people who are not on um, dialysis or have kidney issues, you should take that one minute survey that the National Kidney Foundation has. It only takes you one minute to show possibly if you are leaning towards um, 
a kidney disease. So as you know, that there's 37 million people who are walking around with kidney disease and they don't know it. Mm -hmm. So just take care of yourself and just be in the know. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Dr. Og, I want you to have the last word. And <laughs> uh, I just want to know, you know, everybody watching this, from your perspective, tell us the value of home dialysis. Yeah, I uh, this broadcast. No, I, I appreciate that. And I and, and I, I echo what Tracy said. We, we we made Tableau to make it easier to go home, but but what we really want is pa patients need to be home. Um, when you really look at any really I, I think any issue in life, but but I'll I'll narrow it down to health issues. If you own the process, if you know your medication, if you know what your goals are for treatment, what your physician's trying to accomplish. If you pay attention to your body, as Tracy was mentioning, um, that's when you do better. That's when you know when your treatment may need to be adjusted. Maybe it's more frequent. Maybe it's less frequent. Maybe it's shorter. That's how you know. But the only way to do that is you've got to jump in with both feet and you've got to learn about your disease. Ask those questions. Continue to ask until it makes sense. Um, but, but home dialysis provides patients the opportunity to own their disease and own your schedule. Um, you know, One thing we always like to say is, you know, you can, uh, you can uh, fit dialysis into your life as opposed to living to dialyze. And unfortunately, way too many people live to dialyze in this country with in-center dialysis. Home allows you to do the exact opposite. So, um, and listen to people like Tracy. I, I, I can tell you a little bit about the, the device and the disease and, and what I've done with patients, but other patients, listen, listen to other patients who have been through transplant and in-center and other devices and let them, let them be your guide. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, Dr. Argon, this has been a really great show. Tracy, I, I really appreciate the two of you coming on and Tracy sharing your experience as being the first patient in the United <laughs> States to dialyze at home with the dialysis, uh, with the Tableau dialysis system. And uh, Dr. Argon, again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, to come on and share information about home dialysis, how patients can benefit, and also most important, how the Tableau dialysis system can benefit patients doing home dialysis. Yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know. I'd be happy to come back and do this again. This was a lot of fun. And Steve, oh, really? Steve, thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. Thank yes, you for getting that message much. out there, creating this platform where Tracy and I can come talk. Um, you know, that, that, that's, it's fantastic and we need more outreach like this. So thank you for what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Right. I would like to bring you on Dr. Argon in the future to talk about not the Tableau, but other, um, kidney disease, uh, issues and topics that are real important to the kidney community. Absolutely. Just let me know. We'll, we'll figure out when we get it done. All right. Thank you so much. And Tracy, take care of yourself. Keep doing what you're doing. And um, I'm going to begin with you two to bring you back on so we can hear your full story and see you actually uh, set up. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would love that. And thank you very you. much for the opportunity. Oh, absolutely. People need to see this because if you don't get the information out there, how will they know mm -hmm. what's going on? And one more thing, Tracy, before I go, because I know I got to go produce another show. Um this picture right here, when you flip the tableau, that lid down and close it all up, it doesn't even look like a Dallas machine, does it? No, it doesn't. It looks like a piece, a piece of furniture. You know, wow. I mean, you know, it's in my, I live in a one bedroom apartment. So I took that dining room area and I just made it, I call it my birthing room. So uh, Tammy <laughs> is in her birthing room right now. So. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, again, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time. Again, Dr. Argon, thank you so much. Tracy, thank you. And I'll definitely be reaching out to you soon. That's great. great. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for everyone who joined us. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Take, take care. Bye-bye. Right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Guys, this has been an awesome show. And before I go, let me just make a, a clear distinction, right? Would you rather go here 
I mean, for some people, they have to go in center. All right. And these are how some of these large facilities look like. I mean, they're huge. Look at that. I mean, I would be definitely intimidated if I go in there. Like, what the heck is going on? Would you rather have that or this? I mean, it's a no-brainer. If you were doing home dialysis, it's a no-brainer. Uh, I also got some pictures. We have uh, Kidney Warrior over in, in Cameroon on dialysis. I mean, would you want to do in-center or be at home in the comfort with your wife, your care partner? It's a no-brainer. If you can do it, I would do it. So with that being said, guys, if you have any questions about the Tableau dialysis system, please reach out to Outset Medical, www.outsetmedical.com. And I'm sure they'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have concerning the Tableau dialysis system. And man, that is a nice system. If I ever was to go on dialysis, I'm going home and I'm getting the Tableau. Bar none. All right, guys, stay tuned for the Lisa Baxter show coming up in about 10 minutes. Um, she's going to have a great guest, kidney warrior, uh, transplant warrior, and publisher. So it's going to be an awesome show. I thank you for tuning in tonight. God bless everyone for watching. And again, if you decide to do home dialysis, see if your unit can do the tableau. And if not, try to find one. If you can't do the tableau, do the next stage. But whatever you do, try home dialysis so you can have a better life and more time on your hand. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. Take care. Peace.